Meanwhile, I had gone to Burning Man once, didn't do anything. I was getting ready to go to Burning Man. I was working with a kid named Michael Heflin. He was killed on a motorcycle two weeks before we were going to the desert. At the cemetery, they said, well, would, uh, Michael would have wanted us to go to the desert. So we went to the desert. I had this scrap material from the dinosaur factory. I was going to make something, something. I had no intention of making a temple. We got there, and of course, as we were building, it became obvious that we were making a tribute to a friend who had died. So they, we unceremoniously threw some diesel in it. Maybe 50 <laughs> people put names on it. The next year, Burning Man asked me to come back and build the temple. I'm not a Jew or a Catholic, so what would I dedicate a temple to? And in the desert, we embraced a lot of things that the outside world didn't embrace. I thought if you've had a son or brother or a mother or father or a loved one who's taken his or her life, the most painful loss should be celebrated in the most sacred spot in the temple. So when we built the temple, I dedicated the center to those people who had taken their life. I didn't have a sign on it. None of us said, I didn't tell the crew we were making it. But if you've made a meal with the intention of something, that's how it worked. That year, 500 people put names to people that had taken their life, and 10,000 people put names in it. So it went on to become a tradition at Burning Man. So I built a number of temples in the desert. Uh, most significant thing probably for myself and the crew is we went to Northern Ireland and built a temple in Derry. They had no idea what Burning Man was about, or David Best, or glow sticks. <laughs> they had a whole lot of stuff to forgive. And they went, and both Protestant and Catholic worked together and built the temple. Um, so the premise of using it for loss, you know, at one point Burning Man asked me if I could tone down the suicide issue. Mm -hmm. And I said, get someone else to build it. You know, uh -huh. They, to their credit, understood that the community needed a place to express grief. You know, Sunday, Saturday night when Burning Man goes and the temple burns, all hell breaks loose. I mean, it's the most beautiful pagan ceremony you could ever imagine. <laughs> Sunday night, it's totally silent, mm -hmm. except for a handful of people calling out the names of the people that have been in there. Oh. So for those of you who have lost someone, you know, I want you to feel free once the temple's open to bring the names of those people you've lost. Pictures, bring them in, celebrate and share those people. Oh. It's one thing to lose someone, and it's another thing to waste your life over that loss. You know, you should celebrate someone. You know, people can't be here a long time. You know, we just you know, no one knows the reason. You know, uh, it's important not to blame yourself. Uh, this is built. Smithsonian asked us to come, and asked me to come and build the temple along with the for the Burning Man show. I gave two stipulations. One. We were going to put a thousand screws in the wall. <laughs> and the second thing is that this could be a lot of shit in here. Mm. And I said, you know, you have to be prepared for that. I'm not making a replica of a temple from Burning Man. I'm making a place where you can come and express and reflect on some of the things that have happened to you in your life. Mm -hmm. um, the idea of, of celebrating somebody who's taken their life is to reflect on the wonderful things that that person had or what they gave you, you know? Uh, it's just impossible to know why someone takes their life. You know, you can blame yourself for a long time. You know, it's, it's more important that you go, one goes on with their life, okay? I'm not necessarily a mortician, mm -hmm. you know? But I do know that if you share that loss publicly, there could be somebody next to you who's had the same loss. Okay, and if you've had somebody that's wonderful in your life and you put that person in there, there's going to be somebody that didn't have that wonderful person in their life and you're sharing that love that you had for that person. Uh, we've got a team of people from California and all over the world, kind of, who have been working with me together for a long time. We've been here for a month. We have approximately a million pieces of wood. Uh, and we have 100,000 blocks of wood that you'll be able to come in on Friday, when the temple's open, you'll be able to come and write names in it. Uh, bring pictures of your family members. You know, I think 
The image I have that I think would be so great, and I'm asking one of the people that's a big donor here whose son died of AIDS, I'm gonna ask her for the opening day if she'll bring some flowers and put it on the altar. Mm -hmm. Traditionally, it'd be lovely if all of you over the years, year, mm -hmm. over the year, if you come back in and bring some flowers for your brother or your sister or your mother or for veterans or for the police that die in fires, whatever. But I think that element, this is only an empty building until you guys come in and bring what you have into it, okay? Thank you.